YouTube, what's going on guys? Lego PC. I'm in my little kitchen over here on the bar and uh, hopefully the lighting's okay with you. I've got a lot of lights going on right now, but I didn't really have time to do a full edited video, so just going to do a nice quick edit video. Uh, I did promise you I would be doing a review on the wonderful Sigeli 100 watts. Um, and it's all explored with a billow on top, which is the next to come in the review line, though it's leaking like a son of a bitch right now. I do have a few cons with this guy. We'll go into detail when it comes to that time for that video, but um, the vape is really, really good. It's just, it's got some downsides like that, like the leaking coming from everywhere right now. And it's not all the time, but it's enough to annoy the crap out of you. Anyways, so the Segeli 100 watt, it's been out for a while, you guys have probably seen the reviews. I just wanted to give you guys my take on it. Um, first off, I'm not disappointed with my purchase. I think it's really, really good device. I really like it. It vapes really well. Works exactly as it's supposed to. There's the display screen on it. Um, it's pretty cool. It tells you the wattage, the volts, exactly how much of the percent of the battery is left and the ohm resistance and it's usually fluctuates between 0.4 and 0.5 for me uh, on this device but overall it's usually pretty solid um, it's usually right on the money for the most part now we are going to have to show you a few things this will be pretty quick because i mean there's not a lot to show you about the device i'm just going to give you my opinion on it um, but i'm going to take it apart show you everything for first and then i'll give you my opinions on it um, I can get the bill of the stand up. Stand the fuck up. All right, so inside is a little copper pin that can be screwed up and down. It's adjustable. Now, the thing to remember up with this guy is what would normally tighten it actually loosens it. It's a flathead down there. I've gotten mine loosened up a little bit. I don't like to um, have it all the way jammed down because then you have some addies that won't make contact with it, which is always a problem with these new mods here. But it works. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I just unscrewed it a little bit and then um, raised it probably about three turns. So it reaches all my addies. It don't sit super flush, but that'll work. Um, the actual look of the device is actually really cool. I like it. It's actually uh, a lot heavier, obviously, than IPV, but an actual size comparison, it's not much bigger, to be honest with you. Um, we're talking about you know, that much of a difference. You can see the battery chamber in here only because um, I un I keep it unscrewed. So I just, uh, I don't have magnets, but if I hold it like this, it usually doesn't have a problem. Um, what else? The buttons are pretty simple. You got your fire on and off. You got your plus and your minus here for going up and down. Uh, there's pretty basic stuff in here. What's really cool is it does have room for screw holes. However, it does have a magnet on it. So it is pretty self-explanatory. The bottom is always going to be this piece right here that sticks out a little bit. Um, the inside is very, very clean. We have bottom venting right here. No issues on that. Now, since these are um, side to side, I like to rotate my batteries. Um, one, obviously, this is the positive going up. This is the positive going down. It does tell you on that. I don't know if you'll be able to see it in the light or not, but there is a little emble emblems in the background in the black that tell you where the positive and negative go. Very clean. It's got a little um, pull-out tab here so you can grab your batteries with no problem and maybe clicks right on. So pretty pretty awesome. Um, now the little trick, to, a couple tricks to this device. It's not like the IV I. PV2, you actually want to use um, lower ohms if you're going to want to reach those high marks because the maximum voltage on this, I believe, is like 8.5 volts. So you're obviously not going to get 100 watts if you have a 2 ohm device on there. There's, there's just all we'll do is max out at that ohm. So you're going to need to go below 0.5, I believe it is, or 0.7 to actually get up to 100 watts if you wanted to do it. Obviously, not going to do it on this device. The vape quality on here is really, really good. Um, it does what it says it's doing. So uh, I know um, Bizardo did a little show where he tested all the voltage outputs on it, and it's pretty damn spot on to everything it tells you it's doing. If it says it's doing 4 volts, it's doing 4 volts. So uh, it is very cool. 
I purchased this device off of an eBay seller. I don't know his name offhand, but I was able to get it for $82, I believe, with free shipping. So really good deal. It's sturdy. It has fallen quite a few times and has no marks on it, no dents, no anything. Um, for most people, it's not going to fit in their hands. However, I'm six foot five and I have a real big hand, so this actually works with me perfectly. The look of it in the air holes is driving me freaking nuts. Um, okay, so a couple of the cons. That pin does play around on there in some Addies, and it will have a problem making perfect connection. Um, if you don't, it, and I think that goes with a lot of the um, devices like this, is unless they have that um, self-adjusting pin, that spring-loaded pin. You're going to have issues sometimes where it doesn't read the ohm load correctly and it fluctuates. I know my IPV gave me that problem um, that uh, the, the, the 30 watt clone, whatever the hell you wanted to call it, um, that gave you a lot of issues, especially with really reading the ohms, which is kind of a pain in the ass. However, uh, this device, once I started taking the pin out a little bit, and you can see the gap there, it doesn't bother me at all whatsoever. I've had no issues with it. so. Um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Something to notice that I haven't seen anybody else talk about is it'll say 100% battery life for a long time. And I don't know if that's just my device or somebody else has had this issue, but it'll say 100% for a long time. And then finally it'll start dropping down. Now, something to watch out for is once it gets to 30%, I feel like it catches up from how long it took to go to 100 or drop from down from 100. So once it gets to like 35, 36, it will drop to the teens in less than 10 minutes, 20 minutes tops, you know, depending on how much you vape. So uh, something to watch out for is that 30% mark is pretty much dead. Um, it will also go into low battery mode once it's at about, if I'm, if I'm vaping at what I'm doing right now, it's uh, 38 watts, it'll say low battery once it hits about 20% battery. Uh, so it does have a cutoff, unlike the IPv2, it will just keep running, 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 running. Even when the battery shows it's drained fully, it'll still run. It just won't be performing at the wattage that you put it at. It's going to constantly try to give you those, um, well, for me, 4.0 volts right now. So it's going to constantly kind of do that. And if it can't do that, it's going to not attempt to even do it. It's going to tell you it has low battery. Um, so which is kind of a nice safety feature. I appreciate that. Uh, the fact that you have two batteries in here, the, uh, the life is extremely, extremely long. If I'm vaping like uh, the Limo or a K-Fund, this thing will last me three, four days without, without a charge. It's insane. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten it below 35% with my Limo because I hit four days and I'm like, well, I'm home, I might as well charge it. This device, however, I'm running at 40 watts. Uh, it will sometimes, um, you know, within about a day and a half, two days which is still really, really, really good vape time, so I'm not complaining. Um, for Some of you guys don't like to put the battery side to side. I don't have an issue with it, but make sure you rotate them. So I, I'll put it in the charger right and left, and then remember to switch it when I put it back in the device. Um, what else? That's really about it, about the Segeli. Do I think it's worth the $80? Yeah, if you're looking for this device, and the IPv2 is, what, 50, 60 bucks? Um, for 80 bucks, you know, a couple bucks more, it's it's definitely better a step up upgrade. Now, am I ever gonna use the 100 watts? Probably not, but it's nice that it's there and the battery life is extremely, extremely long. Um, it can be some, pretty big for some people with smaller hands. However, you know, for me, it works. Uh, for me, it's pretty much the perfect size, so I can't complain. Um, overall, it's, it's a really been a really, really good device. Uh, I've been using the Bill on exclusively for about two weeks now since it came in. I really, really like both of them paired up. Honestly, I haven't had any problems with it. Uh, the battery life was the one thing I noticed, but it isn't a problem. It's just something to know. Um, what's in that thirty percent? That you're about to die. It's it's losing battery quickly. Um, it gives a great vape. It hits what it says it's going to hit at. But uh, overall, it's been a really good device for me. I know some people have had their problem with the pins. I have not, so I can't I can't you know talk about that. I can't complain about that. So. Overall, it's been good to me, and it's um, probably my final device for right now. 
I just don't, this is perfect. The, the, the magnet body on it is awesome. I, I love it. So I can just do that and throw it on there. Uh, the battery charging is easy. It does not have a plug-in for a battery charge, which is probably a good thing, but that's fine. You just, when you're at home, since it lasts so long, uh, you can just charge it. I've had it going for two hours now and it still says 100%. So that's what I'm talking about. This thing lasts um, a really, really, really long time. So that's fantastic. Uh, really, that's about it, guys. It's If you have any questions on it, feel free to put some in the comment section. I'll answer what I can, but overall, it's been really good to me actually like the buttons way more. I know some people don't agree, but I do not like these little tactile buttons. Keep pressing on them over and over. It puts indents in my finger and it's annoying as shit. Whereas something big and soft like this is a lot more comfortable in my hand. Not putting imprints in my fingers. Um, it's just something overall that, to me, this is like my perfect device. Uh, so you with smaller hands, uh, I'd probably stay away, go with something smaller. I think the IPv3 is a little bit thinner. Uh, might work out a little bit better, but for me, I mean, it's it's literally perfect. Actually, it could be even a little bit bigger, to be honest with you. For me, you can see how far my thumb can outstretch this thing. Gives off a nice vape, uh, nice warm vape with this billow. Look at it. Um, that's really all I got for you guys. If you have any questions, put some comments in there. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, the Billow is the next review coming up. I've got some interesting things about this guy. Uh, some gripes, but overall, it's a very good tank. We'll talk about that upcoming soon. So stay tuned. Uh, let me know again if there's anything you particularly want to see. Till then, Lego BC. Peace.